Alright guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, this is the first video that I'm posting on uh, this channel. Uh, I'd like to use the first seconds of this video as a disclaimer. Please uh, always refer to your manuals and uh, never use uh, the data in this video as uh, uh, official data. Anyway, uh, let's start. I'd like to start with the fuel, which I consider is a very important aspect of uh, every flight. So uh, we, uh, we will discuss um, the fuel types for uh, commercial co commercial operations. Okay, so uh, fuel types. Here okay, we have four fuel types. They are the taxi fuel. Okay, we'll discuss each one in detail as we go along. We have the trip fuel. Okay, we have the reserves fuel, okay, and we have the extra fuel. Okay, so the taxi fuel is, uh, as you know, the uh, fuel that we use uh, from startup to take off. Okay, this the amount of this fuel, of course, uh, will differ. It depends on the uh, airport. It depends on how much time you need to spend on ground, on the weather condition as well, uh, icing conditions, uh, so on and so forth. Okay. Then we have the trip fuel. Now the trip fuel is uh, the fuel from takeoff with the expected routing. Okay, so uh, you always have to follow different seats. Uh, depends on uh, the airport that you're flying out of. Okay, so uh, the unexpected routing will include the trip fuel. And then from uh, after takeoff to the top of climb, after the, uh, the expected routing, you go to top of climb. And then from top of climb to top of descent. So this is uh, the fuel for the entire um, cruise segment. Top of descent to approach. And approach to landing. Okay, so this is the uh, standard trip fuel that uh, we are using. Then we have the reserve fuel, which we'll discuss in more detail. Uh, the reserve fuel, uh, they are the uh, contingency fuel. Sorry for my writing. Okay, alternate. Final reserve and additional fuel. Okay. And the extra fuel is the fuel that we uh, use, uh, which is uplifted on the discretion of the commander. So we will just write on the discretion. Okay, each uh, company has different policies on the extra fuel uh, procedures. Okay. Okay, so let's discuss um, reserves. And we'll start with contingency. Okay. Now, due to uh, some constraints, uh, traffic constraints, uh, weather constraints, or ATC constraints, we or the ATC might decide that we need to uh, divert uh, um, from our initial uh, planned flight. So, um, this is the contingency fuel. This is where the contingency fuel comes into play. Okay, it's a fuel which is required to compensate for unseen factors. Uh, of course, it's going to happen in every flight, guys, because uh, aviation, the word precision in aviation is just an illusion, okay, so we have so many unseen factors that uh, we should get used to uh, uh, handle. The contingency fuels, we have um, uh, 
few methods of calculating the contingency fuel. Okay, the simplest uh, method is uh, five percent from the trip fuel. Okay, five percent from the trip fuel. Okay, now this means that if we're flying from A to B. the trip fuel will be 5% of the consumption from A to B. So say for example we're burning 2 tons, it means the contingency fuel, okay, contingency fuel will be 5% of 2 tons, which is 100 kilograms. Okay, now uh, most of the times the company would, companies would like to uh, increase the traffic load, so for that reason um, we, they have to uh, decrease uh, the fuel, but of course they have to follow some procedures and legalities. So um, um, they could, um, or we could, we can use the uh, reduced contingency fuel procedure, which is uh, five percent from the um, decision point to the destination. Okay, so that's five percent from the decision point to destination. Okay, uh, no worries, I'll be back uh, in shortly and explain you uh, how this works and what's the decision point and I'll explain everything in detail, okay? Now there's also another method, it's a uh, 3% of the uh, trip fuel in case of on route alternate is available. Okay, so um, what does this mean? Okay, so first let me, Roy, 3% from the trip fuel In case an en route alternate is available. Okay, so um, how did this work? Okay, so say for example we're flying from Hamburg to Rome. Most of this flight will be over Germany and Italy, so um, uh, it will be over land, it will be over well-developed countries, so uh, what do you think? Do you think we'll have from Hamburg to Rome en route uh, alternate? Of course we will. So in this case, we'll use 3% uh, of the... Uh, we'll use the procedure with 3%. So guys, again, this is, uh, this is uh, what the uh, uh, basic manual says. Of course, uh, your companies or most of the companies uh, might have different procedures. But this is what you need to, to know uh, based on your ATPL. Okay? And then we have another method, which is five minutes of uh, flight time above the destination in standard conditions. Okay? So five minutes of holding. Above the destination. In standard air condition. Okay. So um, we usually take whichever is the greatest. Okay, guys, it's very important. It's always. I'll just write it here for you. Whichever is the greatest okay what does this mean for example let's say we are flying as we said earlier from A to B and we're burning two tons from A to B because say the flying time is one hour flying time is one hour okay so how much uh, uh, how much um, contingency fuel should we take for for this? We know that five percent of one hour of uh, flight we consuming two tons per hour, which means we need one hundred kilograms of fuel based on five percent 
for this particular flight, okay, for, for a one hour flight. But five minutes of holding above the destination, okay, will require more fuel because uh, five minutes out of two tons per hour gives us approximately 166 kilograms of fuel. So in this case, we'll uplift 166 kilograms of fuel. So we'll go with this procedure for this case, in case we have a one hour flight and with a burn of two tons per hour. So you guys, you could, you could just figure it out. You can make the calculations. So this is how it works. We always take uh, whichever is the greatest amount. Okay, in case we have a 20, uh, correction, a 10 hour flight, um, of course, uh, the 5% of the uh, 10 hours, uh, keeping in mind that we burn two tons per hour will be much greater than uh, five minutes of holding. So in that case, we'll take, um, Okay guys, so um, let's discuss produce contingency fuel procedure. Okay. Uh, now what is uh, a reduced contingency fuel procedure? The reduced contingency fuel procedure is a procedure which is used in order to uh, reduce the uh, fuel load on the airplane in order to increase the traffic load. Okay, uh, this is done for obvious reasons. Whenever we plan a flight with the, the reduced contingency fuel procedure, we need a decision point along the route. Okay. Um, what is decision point? Uh, the decision point is the point at which uh, the crew must make a decision uh, whether to continue to the destination or uh, divert to alternate. Uh, in case the fuel calculations are not um, uh, are not enough in order to reach the flight with the reserves intact. Okay. So I'll just write it down for you. This procedure is used to reduce the fuel load. in order to increase okay I'll just write an arrow increase the traffic load okay so this is uh, this is the definition of the uh, reduced contingency fuel procedure okay uh, now how does uh, this work okay say for example we are planning a flight from Hamburg to Doha via a decision point. Okay, just after midway, which is Beirut. Okay, so this is our route. Now, how will this work? Obviously, the distance between Hamburg and uh, uh, Beirut is much uh, larger than the distance between Beirut and Doha itself. So um, we can ignore, of course not ignore, but we should not calculate the contingency fuel for the whole route. But we will calculate 5% from Beirut, which will be our decision point, okay, from Beirut, decision point, to Doha. So we, sh we should no longer take the 5% for the entire segment. We only take 5% between Beirut and Doha. Okay. Um, of course, we need to perform a calculation. So say this is the top of descent for Beirut airport. Okay. Just before reaching the top of descent for Beirut, we need to perform a fuel calculation in order to make sure that the fuel is enough to reach Doha plus this 5%. Of contingency fuel okay in case the fuel is not enough we have to divert to Beirut and uplift more fuel okay so this is very important I'll just write it for you at, at top of descent to Beirut the crew must perform
a fuel calculation to make sure fuel is enough to reach a destination and also have a plus five percent contingency fuel from decision point, so from Beirut, from from Beirut, okay, to Doha. Okay, guys. So I hope you got the picture. Uh, just um, keep in mind that you need to um, and at top of the send to be to the decision point, which is in our case Beirut, you need to perform the fuel calculation, and you must have the five percent. Uh, you must have five percent of contingency fuel, based on calculation of the trip fuel from Beirut to Doha. Okay. So um, still we're at the reserve, so we'll discuss the alternate fuel. The alternate fuel. Okay, so the alternate fuel is, um, as the name suggests, I'm just going to write it in uh, key points. Uh, the first key point is uh, the alternate fuel is the fuel to uh, perform a misapproach from the applicable minimum descent altitude or height and to complete the missed approach procedure. Okay, so it's a fuel for missed approach. From the applicable uh, decision height or minimum descent altitude or height. Of course, if you're flying decision or no uh, precision or no precision approach, it depends. Um, to complete. the missed approach procedure. Okay. After you completed the missed approach procedure, still in the alternate fuel, you have included uh, the fuel for climb with the expected departure routing. So after the missed approach, of course, you'll be given a clearance or uh, of course, you'll have it published on your uh, approach charts. So for climb, with expected departure routing. Okay. After that, of course, top of climb to top of descent. Top of descent to approach. Approach to landing. Okay. Now, very important, guys. Say, in case you have two destination alternate, which is uh, which you have into account, you always take the alternate fuel, which uh, the greater amount of alternate fuel, which is required to reach the one which is furthest. Okay. So, if two destinations alternates are available, you always required required to take into account the one. 
which requires the greatest amount of fuel. Okay, so this is the uh, alternate fuel. Guys, now for the final reserve fuel. Uh, just before discussing a very important aspect, guys, for you to know, um, you should always ask for Mayday before you notice that you're gonna use your final reserve fuel. Okay, so this is a Mayday fuel. Uh, this is you have to make the distress call because this is the last fuel you have on board. Uh, you don't wanna uh, you don't wanna be sent holding. When you know that's the only fuel you have on board, so you have to ask for Mayday, okay? So what is final reserve fuel? So final reserve fuel for the jet engine is uh, 30 minutes of holding, of a uh, correction, of flying at holding speed. at 1,500 feet okay. above the air drum. Okay, so what does uh, flying at holding speed means? Of course, you know you have different uh, categories of the airplanes, A, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and so forth. So. Uh, each airplane has uh, uh, its own, each category of airplane has its own uh, holding speed, okay? So, um, also very important, the um, final reserve fuel should be calculated with the estimate uh, aircraft landing mass for the alternate or the destination in case you don't, you have not planned for, uh, for an alternate. Now we have the additional fuel. Okay, so what's the additional fuel? Additional fuel is um, the fuel that um, provides the aircraft to descend and to uh, go to the uh, alternate aerodrome. In case you have an engine failure or a pressurization loss, uh, we calculate it at the most critical points on route, okay? So, we'll provide the aircraft. Aircraft. To descend and proceed to an alternate. Okay, it could be any alternate that you have planned on uh, on your route. To an alternate when there is. A pressurization loss or engine failure okay very important calculated at the most critical point oh, onwards okay um, so it speaks for itself okay uh, whenever say you're flying over water uh, the most the alternate the additional fuel is uh, calculated in case one of these stuffs will happen on the most critical point on route which means whenever you're the furthest away uh, from your uh, alternates okay also um, still in the additional fuel uh, 
um, there is included okay, 15 minutes of holding at 1,500 feet. At 1,500 feet. Okay, to make an approach to land. land or uh, it could be 15 minutes of holding above the destination in case the flight is planned without an alternate. And last but not the least is the extra fuel. Which is fuel uh, uplifted uh, on the discretion of the commander. So we just write uh, on of the commander. Okay. Uh, of course, different companies, different policies, but uh, just to stay on the safe side, always decide to uplift more fuel. Okay, uh, more fuel is never bad. It's not convenient for the companies, of course, or for the operators, but um, our job as pilots is to keep the uh, passengers and the airplane on the safe side. So always uplift more fuel, guys. So uh, that was about uh, the fuel uh, so far. Of course, uh, there are many more. Uh, aspects uh, uh, regarding uh, this subject but this is the uh, the basic stuff that you should know uh, so far in order to um, uh, make an order of them uh, inside your mind uh, anyway um, I hope um, you guys will subscribe and will leave a comment in the box and let me know what other videos I should do in uh, regard to uh, to which subject uh, would you uh, request help? Thank you very much.